examined your life, gone through those material, and I fully believe that some of you may be able to locate yourself in that position. You know, all these stages that I'm mentioning here from the scripture, it is not to condemn anybody, but it would give us an awareness where we are standing. If you have seen those characteristics in your life, and you, if you have been a Christian for a long time, it is the time to make a decision and move forward. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 13, verse number 11, we find Apostle Paul saying this, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. That means we can say bye-bye to all the childishness and grow in the Lord. We have to decide to grow in the Lord. You know, remember, I told you in the very beginning part of this teaching that spiritual growth does not happen by default. Spiritual growth will not happen by default. That means you cannot expect a growth spiritually and do nothing you know, to enhance it, to, to make it happen. Want to go back to the same scripture portion that we read last time, 1 John chapter 2. Today we'll be focusing on verse number 14. Here John is writing, I write to you, dear children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you're strong. And the word of God lives in you, and you have overcome the evil one. As I told you before, Apostle John was not writing to the young people in the church. He was writing to everybody. But he was just talking about this particular group of spiritual growth, and he was you know, specifically addressing those people, men and women, on, in their spiritual youthhood. So he talks about some of the characteristics there. Number one, he tells them this, that you are strong. You know, one of the characteristics of youthhood is this, that they are really, really strong. When I go and shake hands with blessing, you know, it is really, I'm very cautious because he can crush my hand. It's really strong. Young people, one of the things that you are so proud of is your strength. And that's the same thing in our Christian life too. When you have passed the childishness or the childhood, you know, nature of spiritual growth and you passed on to the youthhood, one of the things that makes you special is this, that you are strong in faith. I thank and praise the Lord for those people who are strong in faith. And, and today, if you think that you are not that strong in faith, this is the time that you have to make the decision. I want to have that in my life. I want to grow. I want to be strong in faith. So this is one of the special characteristics that they're strong in the faith. So growing in faith is a process. I want you to understand that. Growing in faith is a process. It is not going to come just like that. You know, you were a, a, a child up till now, and now you pass on to youthhood, and all of a sudden, you will not become strong in faith. It is a process. You have to grow each and every day. If you open your Bible to Romans chapter 4, verses 18 through 20, it talks about Abraham, in hope, he believed against hope. I want you to notice the characteristic here. In hope, he believed against hope. That means there was no hope seen. There was no possibility. There was no way that thing could happen. But he believed, that's what it says, that he should become the father of many nations. He didn't have a child at that point. But he still believed that he was going to be the father of the nations. Of many nations, as he has been told, so shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith 
but he considered his own body which was as good as dead he knew the fact he was not denying the fact he knew very well that his body was dead he was it was not able he believed that his body was not capable of producing an offspring but in the midst of all those things without denying the fact he believed in the lord hallelujah he says he did not weaken in faith but he considered his own body which was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old or when he considered the barrenness of sarah's womb no unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of god but he grew strong in his faith each and every day he was growing in faith so that is something that we need to understand we can grow in faith it is a process now if it is a process what we should do if you are to grow in faith we have to do certain things if you read romans chapter 10 verse number 17 we find the very first ingredient that we need hearing the right stuff hearing the word of god it says very clearly so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god friends let me just tell you it matters what you hear you are just with your friends and all the time you know just sometimes you you talk with people they always talk about things that doesn't work you have to keep a distance from those people if that company always tells say hey you cannot make it this is not going to work this is not going to move forward your life i don't see any any light there if they are continuously telling you that you need to move away because faith is not growing in you and without faith it is impossible to please god every time you come before god and you see a situation that is not working god has given you that situation so that you would grow in faith but if you listen to those people who tells you that it is not going to work and then you yourself say that it is not going to work you are not going to grow in faith you want to be strong in faith you have to see that situation accept the fact at this point it seems so dark at this point it is not going to work but you have to make your mind and say it with my god it is possible just like abraham said you know believe that it was possible and he trusted in the lord and he began to grow in faith so it matters what you hear you know people of god let me just encourage you every talk that you hear matters you talk about you know people you hear all the time criticisms it is going to matter your faith hallelujah even when you walk outside this place stay in the kapi kada and talk you know just a lot of things it matters your faith understand that it is very clear understand that that thing very clearly what you hear it it affects your faith you want to grow strong in the lord you have to you know make sure that you hear things that would uplift you you want to make sure that you th- you hear stuff that brings faith in you the word of god hallelujah so that is one of the ways that you can grow your faith you know i wish i have more time to explain but since i got a lot of material to cover today i'm just going you know fast forward the next thing is prayer you need to ask the lord lord increase my faith in luke chapter 22 verses 31 through 32 here jesus himself talking to uh, simon peter he said simon simon indeed satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith should not fail he prayed for peter so prayer is something that works in our life you have to ask the lord lord increase my faith let me just tell you this when you make that prayer things are going to happen in your life that you don't like because it's a process it's a process you know sometimes our children would ask us to teach them how to ride the 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 bike and you take the pedals off and now you think you know they they began to think man there is nothing for me to step on you take the pedals off and you ask them to push it's so hard there is you know i cannot keep the balance but you made the prayer before that you want to ride that bike in the same way in the same manner when you ask the lord to increase your faith things are going to happen in your life and god wants you to have a strong faith Hallelujah Ephesians chapter 3 verse number 16 
Here Apostle Paul is praying for the Ephesian believers. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So he's praying for these believers that they become strong in faith. You can ask parents, you need to pray for your children and pray that Lord increase their faith, strengthen them in their inner being. You have to make that prayer. Sometimes we have to be very specific about prayer. You know, if they are strong in faith, they would achieve what God wanted them to achieve. There's no question about it. But sometimes we pray, Lord, bless my child, bless their education, give them wisdom so that they can study more. That's what we pray. We need to pray that, Lord, give them something that they would increase in their faith so that they would experience God more in their life and they would reach that destiny that God wanted them to reach. You have to pray. Prayer is something that helps us. Sometimes we don't want to pray. Our prayers are basically, you know, just talking about our selfish needs. We want to have this thing, Lord. I want to have this thing, Lord. I want this prayer to be answered. If you give me this, I would just give myself to you. You know, I sometimes say, sometimes we all are Jacobites. That means the prayer that Jacob prayed, if you bless me, I will give you this. You know? I'm not talking about the Jacobite churches, okay? I'm talking about those people who pray like this. Lord, you first give me this, then I will give all these things to you. And then forget about what you prayed and you go on with your life. That's what he did. You know, that's not what I'm asking. That's not the kind of prayer. Lord, strengthen me in my inner being. Every Christian should pray. Don't just stay as a child all your life. Don't walk around with that pacifier that gives you that comfort. You know, churches are full of spiritual babies, spiritual infants. That should change. People should grow in faith. The problem is this, that so many babies are there. When all the babies cry from one side to the other, it becomes so hard for the leaders because you have to attend those babies. You cannot leave them there because they are also in the process of growing. When you grow... All those childish behavior is going to go and you become strong in faith. When you face a situation, you know that God is strengthening me. You know that God is putting faith in me. And you make more prayers and Lord help me that I may increase in faith. The next thing is speaking. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse number 13. Speaking words of faith. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken since we have the same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. That means you speak the words of faith. Every situation, you always speak the words of faith. You may not see things happening at that point. You may not see any, anything happening at that point. But still you see what God can do in that situation. When you go through a sickness, you just don't see any kind of answer at that point, but you know somebody who can heal you. Hallelujah. So you speak words of faith. Some people don't do that. You know, just they don't, they always complain. The, every word that comes out of their mouth is about complaining about something or somebody. You know, you stay with that person, your faith is going to go down and down. You just listen to that person. It's going to affect your spiritual growth. You want to be a strong person, a strong person in faith. You have to speak words of faith. Every morning you get up, speak something positive. You know, just don't think that, oh man, I just got up. I don't know what is waiting for me. No, no, no. Don't complain about those things. Don't complain about any situation. But you simply speak the words of faith. Lord, I thank you for the day that you have given me. Lord, I know that there are a lot of good things waiting for me. Enable me to see you in every situation. You praise, you pray, and also, you know, just you speak words of faith. When situations come against you, if you want to grow, you have to speak these words of faith. If you watch those people, those young guys who go to the uh, gym, you know, just they always talk about those things. Talking about strengthening their muscles. You know, I can lift up this. I can do this. They don't say, I, I cannot do this. I don't know why I go there. You know, if you say a couple of things like that, you'll be like me. You will pay the price, but you will not go to the gym. 
You know, those, there, are, there, are, there are people who talk always about those things, strengthening themselves. And you see them regular, you see them exercising, you see them doing stuff that, so that they can be strong. So you speak words of faith. In Christian growth, that is one of the things that you have to do, always speak, you know, words of faith. You see, you know, those people who are going to get married, you know, just think about a family that is going to praise the Lord. You just imagine all those things and you start praising from this point on. That's what exactly Abraham did. He didn't see anything happening at that point. He received the promise that was true, but he started speaking. He started acting on it. Hallelujah. So something that we have to do if we have to be strong in faith. Those people who are strong in faith, you can see these characteristics. You see them praying positively. You see them speaking positively. You see them standing where people speak words of faith. You don't see them, you know, just in the circle of people who always speak, you know, rubbish things or always speak things that are not, you know, just uplifting. You don't see them there. That is the quality. You have to examine yourself. And if you want to grow, that is something that we need to do. Let me just move on. First Peter chapter 1 verse number 7. It talks about trials. Trials are a good thing. It purifies our faith. It just strengthens our faith. Just like you put silver or gold into fire and refine it. Make it really good in the same manner. Trials just purifies our faith. So something happens in your life. Don't complain about that situation. See it as a situation that is strengthening you more. Every trial, every hardship. You know, young people, when you face those challenges in your education, in your life, don't give up. Don't simply complain. Don't get, you know, just uh, really, you know, down in your spirit, but see it as an opportunity. This challenge God has given me, I know that I can overcome this. And see it as your faith and you know, is being purified. Here Peter says, these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of a greater worth than God, gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So every trial, it is for the good of our spiritual growth. Hallelujah. The next thing is thankfulness. That is another thing. You know, those people who are strong in faith, when situations come, they are not going to, bad situations come, they are not going to complain. They know that this is for their growth. And thankfulness. The same portion, Romans chapter 4, verse number 20. No unbelief made him, that is Abraham, waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. You know, people of God, we need to learn that. And sometimes I have seen people saying like this, you know, because he was transferred from this hospital to the other, he got better. Man, at that, that new hospital, that person moved, hundreds of people died that day. But it is just because of God's grace that you got better. We don't want to acknowledge that, even small things. You know, something that we had to do, even for smaller things, we had to praise and thank God. That's what Abraham did. Everything that was happening in his life, he began to give glory to God. Lord, I thank you for the strength. Lord, I thank you that I got up today. Lord, I thank you for the kids you have given me. When you start praising God, you are increasing in your faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to learn those things. Now, certain indicators that shows that we are not strong in faith. Fear is one thing. A lot of people who live in fear, they act in fear. They talk in fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. When you have fear, that means you have no faith. Faith is something that helps you to see beyond the circumstance that you're facing. Fear is something that talks about the circumstance that makes it so bigger in your life. So if you're talking fear, what is going to happen? We're concerned about that. Hallelujah. We don't need to worry about any of those situations. Because God is in control. How many of you believe that God is in control? Every situation we face, God is in control. Satan wants you to get scared about the situations. You know when 
Disciples were in the board screaming aloud, help us Lord. What did Jesus say to them in the midst of that storm? You people of little faith. So he's comparing their fear with the faith. So, you know, just when faith increases, fear just goes out. You can face any situation. You do all those things. Anything that comes in your life, you can face. Hallelujah. So fear is something that talks about. If a person is talking all the time, fear. In fear. There are so many people who even act. You know, even act before something happens. Because they're so scared. I think I remember, I, 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 I think it's, I said this thing last week, you know, just there are kids who go and fight with the other kids thinking that something is going to happen. In the church also, it is like that. Sometimes some people would come and say something and the other brother would be wondering why in the world he said this. He goes and thinks about all those things, no clue at all. The only reason is this, the other brother or sister thought about something that is scary, and then he just said it. That's all. You know, we act in fear. That is opposite to growing in faith. Now, the other thing is a stronghold can pull you down in your faith. Strongholds, what is a stronghold? It is a mental block. If you think about God as a cruel God all the time, if you think about God as an unjust you know, judge, if you think about God as somebody who don't listen, you speak about, you talk about all these things, then you go and pray, nothing is going to happen. Because you're not going to grow in faith. You already made that mindset. Satan has already put the block in you. You see your children and then you already made up your mind. Something is in your mind. You know, the devil has brought all, brought all the situations and you are thinking that they are not going to prosper. They are not going to do good. And with that attitude, you go into God's presence. You fast and pray and say, Lord, help my child. Nothing is going to work because you have undone the power of prayer through your action. We have to change. We have to pull down all the strongholds. Think what is blocking you from growing in faith. You have to pull down those things, the strongholds. We have to bring it at the feet of Jesus Christ. Every kind of fear, every kind of strongholds, we have to bring it at the feet of Jesus Christ. Doubt is another thing. You know, there are people who live in doubt. They doubt their spouses. They doubt their pastor. They doubt their boss. They doubt their, you know, houses. They even doubt their chair. They, they push it a couple of times before they sit on the chair. Doubt. If you want to grow in faith, you have to leave all those things. The Word of God tells us in James chapter 1, verse number 5 through 8, if you read it, it is very clear there that if you waver, if you doubt, you get nothing from the Lord. The Word is so clear. Nothing. Then how come we got Rain, how come he got this blessing? Understand that God is a gracious God who reigns upon the evil people and the good people. You know, just, he is not going to rain, you know, bring rain upon good people here and then, you know, just IPA this much area and then leave the rest of the place, you know, just without rain. No, no, he's not going to do that. He's going to rain upon all of us. Some of the things he does because he's a compassionate God, not because he heard your prayer. He is so loving. He is not, so compassionate. He answered you, you know, just he, he was so compassionate about your situation and he gave an answer. That's all. Hallelujah. Doubt is something that we have to be very, very careful about. The other one is unforgiveness. Not forgiving somebody. That's the greatest of all the sins. Let me just tell you this. You cannot forgive somebody. The word of God tells us if you don't forgive, he is not going to listen to your prayer. You can pray all your heart out. You can very stylishly pray. You can use all kinds of good words in your prayer. But if you cannot forgive somebody, then God is not going to answer your prayer. The word of God very clearly tells us he is not even going to forgive you. Without forgiveness, how are you going to experience that blessing? People of God, we should be willing to forgive other people because we have received that forgiveness. You want to grow in faith. You want to move in, in your spiritual life and attain that growth. One of the things you have to do is forgive. Some people, for no reason, for no reason, hold some stuff, you know, just... 
in 19 some year he did this or she did this and that century is all together gone completely gone it's a new new time a new era a new year you know we just have to forgive let let it go let it go if you have to ask that person that shows how big you are some people are so intimidated they don't want to go to the other person and say you know i have done something you know i want you to forgive me it's so hard for them to say this the reason is this the pride is so big in them that affects your spiritual growth when pride is there the word of god tells us that god hates those people who are proud he keeps himself away from the proud people you have to come down we are nothing we need to understand that it is just god's grace that sustains us go to the other person and ask them forgiveness hallelujah that you can grow in the lord let me just move on you are the word of god living in you i write to you young men because you are strong and the word of god lives in you when you grow to that spiritual youthhood the word of god lives in you if somebody has to live in our house first we have to allow them in am i right you have to open the door so that someone could come in and live with you so we have to allow the word of god into our heart if you if you want to see the word of god living in you first you have to open your heart and allow the word of god to come inside i'm very happy you know i'm thrilled about so many people you know last year we started say, you know, with me saying you know just this year we have to complete uh, at least one time you know just reading the bible i gave you the 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 reading chart and all those things i'm very happy that so many people finished several times that's something really good something really good those of you who are struggling just continue even if you didn't finish that is okay you know just continue the same chart maybe you will be able to finish it in you know just january or february or march but finish it allow the word of god to come inside you it is not going to come automatically because you got the holy spirit inside you don't think that the holy spirit is going to bring all the word into you so that you can know the word first you have to put the word of god inside your heart hallelujah you have to go through the word of god you have to allow the word of god inside you if word of god lives inside you you will develop a love for the word of god hallelujah there's a love that comes how you treat i have seen you know just people just holding the bible like this and walking you know one bible in one corner the other one in the church sometimes i feel so sad we got a lot of bible stacked up on the back people who have no idea one of the things that really fascinated me was this somebody lost a bible in our congregation and i'm very sure that none of our brothers would take it purposefully we all are good i fully believe the thing that i it amazed me was this they never opened that bible if they opened that bible they would see that it is not theirs they kept it there transported back to the church that is not loving the word of god you have to go sit you know just with the word of god study the word of god go deep into the word of god read it several times you meditate on god's word you develop a love for the word something that we need if you want to be strong in faith if you want to be a very strong person in your christian growth you have to allow the word of god to live inside you you have to develop a love for the word of god because the word of god is going to strengthen you it is going to encourage you it is going to you know enlighten you it is going to bring that healing to you it is going to increase your faith hallelujah you have to allow the word of god and your life reflects the indwelling word let me just move on how do you know that you truly love the word yeah you're walking around with a cup of you know just uh, some something you are holding a cup in your hand if somebody bumps onto you then you will know exactly what is in their cup is going to come out is going to come out 
Some people say, I, I love the word so much. Oh, pastor, I love according to the word. But something happens. Man, you can see what is going to come out from them. What is going to come out of their mouth. Because they're filled with something else. Let me just encourage you, my friends, that we have to live, allow the word of God to live inside us. So that our life would reflect the indwelling word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that we can grow in our, in our, in, in our Christian life. Let me just move on. You are an overcomer. That marks a strong, youthful Christian. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God lives in you and you have overcome the evil one. Now, if you give a task to young people, you can depend on them. The reason is they're going to do it. They're going to do it. You know, we leaders, we know there are people who, you know, just you entrust them with something. You don't have to go after them. They are strong enough to do those things. They will accomplish those things. They can overcome any hurdle. That's the mark of youthhood. You know, any, anything that you tell them that you cannot do it, most of them will do it. Because they want to show that they are strong. That's a mark of youthhood. So here, Apostle John is telling these people, I write to you because you have overcome the evil one. That's the speciality of, you know, just youthhood in our spiritual growth. What makes you really an overcomer? First of all, you're ready with the armor of God. That is the thing. Always that armor is there. You know, in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 through 18, you can read and study about the armor of God. You can see they are totally geared, you know, just getting ready for the battle. When the enemy comes, they are ready to defeat him. It's not when the enemy comes, you look for where I kept my belt, you know, I don't know. Where I kept my shoes, I don't know. Where I put my shield, you're just running and looking for those things. No, no, no. A soldier is always ready. The belt of truth buckled around your waist. Breastplate of righteousness in place. Your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Shield of faith. And then the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All these things, you are ready with these things. When the enemy comes against you, you can be an overcomer. First of all, if you're, you know, you're ready with that armor. Some people don't carry any of those things. The only thing that they know is to run. You know, there's a saying in, in, in Indian native Malayalam language that if you write in a paper, there are some people, you know, if you write in a paper, Adi, they will run away. You don't have to beat them. Just have to write it in a paper. They're that scared. They're good in running away. When Satan comes against you. If you got a tendency to go back like this, that shows that you are not that grown in your spiritual life. People of God, we don't need to be afraid of the devil. If you really fear the Lord, you don't have to fear anybody. The problem is this, we don't fear the Lord. We don't respect the Lord. We don't kneel before the Lord. That's the problem. And also, let me just move ahead now because we have less time. You overcome evil with good. That is one of the qualities of a person who have grown to that youthhood. You overcome evil with good. But many a times the problem is this. We want to overcome evil with the evil. When somebody talks against me five words... I want to talk 10 words. When somebody is angry with me, then I have to show my anger in a double fold. That's the way we operate. 
If that's the way we operate, that shows that we have not grown to that level. Tit for tat, you know, just, we just wanted to attack our brothers and sisters. That's not right. My brothers, my sisters, let me urge you, let me beseech you by the mercies of God that we love one another. We don't go and fight with the people. You know, today in the Sunday school class I was sharing with my students, I feel so saddened to see Christians, you know, just, I thought they were strong Christians fighting over this election that happened. Their true colors started pouring out, you know, just accusing one another, using even nasty words and pictures to portray their own brethren. Hatred that is coming out. That's not the sign of a true Christian. The word of God tells us if you, grow, you have grown to that level, you overcome evil with good. Romans chapter 12, verse number 21. Do not be overcome by evil. Do not be overcome by evil. That means the evil can overcome you if you go in the route. But overcome evil with good. That's what the word of God tells us. When you are strong, when you are growing, that is something that you do. Somebody does something against you, you go the opposite route. You show them the love of Jesus Christ. You overcome evil with good. Then you have the words of overcomers. That is another thing. Paul, if you look at him, he just says this, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That was his word. Oh, I don't think we can do it. Is there anything impossible with our Lord Jesus Christ? There is nothing impossible. Words of possibility. Words of confidence that comes from you. When the enemy hits against you, you say that he is not going to prosper. His plans are not going to prosper. His plans are not going to prosper on my children. His plans are not going to prosper in my church. His plans are not going to prosper on my brother's life, my sister's life, because I know that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. You speak that thing out. You say that thing out. Words of confidence that comes from a grown-up you know, believer. We have to come up to that level because God wants us to grow in that level. Not to stay in one state and think that I'm, everything is done. Revelation chapter 12, verse number 11. If you, read, if you read, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. By the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. You want to overcome the devil? Two things are here. The blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. That means you speak things, you know, just of faith. Hallelujah. If God has delivered me from that problem that I faced two years ago, I know my God is able to do it. You ask David, he would tell the same thing. If he has delivered me from the hands of those, you know, beasts, I'm sure this is not a challenge for me because my God is going to help me. That is the attitude, my friends. And you depend upon the strength of the Lord. You want to be an overcomer, you always depend. Not only your strength, you cannot you know, shout at the devil. He, you know, he's not going to run away because you are so loud. Some people think like that. You know, I have seen people screaming at the devil so loud. Then they have to look for water because already their throat is gone. You know? You don't have to scream aloud because it is not because of that voice that the devil runs away. It is the strength of the Lord in you. Apostle Paul is asking the Ephesian believers, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. That is something that we need to be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. It is not my strength that I'm banking on. It is not my ability that I'm banking on. It is not my, you know, speech that I'm banking on. It is his ability. It is his might that makes me a victor. Hallelujah. This morning, my friends, we have to grow, and growth doesn't happen by default. Hallelujah. Just like Apostle Paul said, when I was, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, but now I leave all those things because I want to grow. Hallelujah. Would you make that decision today and say, Lord, 
I want to grow spiritually to the level that you want me to. It is a process. It is going to take some years, in, especially in this area. It is going to take you know, some years for you to mature in this area, but you're willing and asking the Lord, Lord, I want to walk that path, that I would be strong, that I would always be an overcomer in all the situations that comes in my life. That I want to be strong in faith. That I want truly to have the word of God gripping my heart. And also, I want to be an overcomer. Come up to that level and say, Lord, this is what I am. But this is what I want to be.